This is KSI in his first fight, and this is KSI in his last fight with temper. He has a seat. How could this well-known video game kid become an elite boxer? To answer this question, let's analyze his development and fights. At the beginning of his career, KSI couldn't even be called a boxer. He was at the level of an average street fighter, and his style reflected that. He had poor technique. With his hands lowered and jaw open, he couldn't even defend himself, and his only advantage was brawling. KSI's stance resembled Muhammad Ali's, but without the skills of Muhammad Ali. All he did was repeatedly throw weak jabs. You could barely call it punches. He simply tried to put his hand in the opponent's face and throw a right overhand when the opponent opened up. However, at the amateur level, most fighters use the jab in this way. Even McGregor, with a decade of martial arts experience under his belt, couldn't help but stroke Mayweather's face with weak jabs during their fight. The main problem for KSI was that sometimes he didn't even land his jab. He extended his arm and ate punches. But we know what he tried to do to keep the distance. The technique of keeping a distance with the front hand is one of the best defensive techniques in boxing, but its purpose is to keep distance. However, KSI's coach probably forgot to teach him this because if the fight is already at close range, it's a fatal mistake and dangerous up to the point of a knockout. Any more or less experienced fighter could have punched KSI, but Weller didn't understand what to do even more than him. While KSI was trying to scare the opponent away with his hand, Weller was just trying to catch up with him and, like a wild man, tried to hit the air harder, being a mile away from the opponent. In fact, KSI's jab both helped him and hindered him. Objectively, this is a problem and a boxer like Jake Paul would have knocked him out for such a mistake. The fight between KSI and Weller was similar to KSI's fight against Logan Paul, but on the contrary, KSI's taller and longer-armed opponent was able to take advantage of him. Objectively speaking, I believe KSI lost the fight and I can explain why. The fighter's anthropometric data, such as height and reach, play a crucial role in determining the appropriate distance for a fight. To put it simply, for a taller fighter, it is advantageous to maintain distance and focus on straight punches, while for a shorter fighter, it is more effective to work at close range. Even though he had learned to hold a block, which is a significant improvement, the tactics that worked against Weller were not effective against Paul. You can't keep your distance when your reach is much shorter than your opponent's, and you don't need to keep your distance if you are shorter. In fact, KSI fought as if he was taller than Paul. Maybe he feels himself above everyone sometimes, but you can't ignore reality. In the style of Weller, KSI just ran into Logan's jabs and straights. It's amazing how important it can be just to possess a jab. It's not some rare technique. In fact, it's the basis of boxing. One-two combos and jabs. But until you are able to use complex combinations, this is the only salvation. But of course, there are exceptions like the Diaz brothers, who in principle rely on straight punches for 90% of their combinations. But let's get back to the fight. The speed of Logan's attacks became an important factor. He is much faster than KSI. As McGregor said, timing beats speed and precision beats power. But KSI had nothing of that at the time. Logan was already just mocking KSI because styles make fights and it became clear to Logan that KSI was not ready for his style. Logan was able to avoid KSI's short arms by tilting his head slightly and immediately counterattacking. So what do you believe was the main issue in the fight? For those who watched the video closely, it may be clear. The next problem was the rhythm and pace of the fight, which I previously mentioned in reference to the Weller fight. Logan was able to dictate the pace of the fight. He repeatedly punished KSI for being at the wrong distance. It took KSI a couple of rounds to figure out how to shorten the distance and the fact that he actually needed to do it in order to have a chance of winning. At these moments, we can see how good fighters fight IQ. Despite losing the fight, KSI understood how to potentially win. He attempted to make lateral movements and even use the Tyson's pendulum technique. He recognized the need to engage in close-range brawl. Due to these efforts, he was able to win some rounds, and the fight became an intense battle with no room for technicalities. 
So in this fight, JJ showed that he can adapt and demonstrate his fighting IQ. He was able to identify all his technical problems, and I was eager to see how he would fix them in the second fight. In the second fight, KSI made noticeable changes to his movements, becoming more like a professional boxer. His block was higher, a decision made to counter Logan's jabs. KSI also fully built a strategy on the clinch and close range, abandoning his habits with jabs and outstretched arms from his first fight. Instead, he used a jab to the body to enter the close range and develop attacks there. KSI leaned away from Paul's jabs and flew into him, but Paul soon began to stop his jab with a hook, which prevented KSI from using his technique effectively and made him hitting air again. To be honest, KSI could not figure out how to deal with Paul's longer reach and stronger jab. All of their fights were essentially a battle for control of the jab, and the winner was the one who was able to use it better and neutralize the opponent's jab. KSI tried to do everything. He used the clinch to short the distance. He even tried to tilt almost to the floor with overhand counterattacks. However, this strategy ultimately led to a brawl rather than a technical boxing match. It's interesting to note that in terms of exchanges, this highlights KSI's strengths as a fighter, but also emphasizes the importance of using them wisely and effectively in order to win. Overall, while KSI did more damage in this fight, he still lost from a purely boxing perspective in both fights against Paul. The main reason was that he relied too much on his overhand, which led him to get tired and not hitting as often. His jaw was open. His arms were swinging to the sides. This is what turned him back from a good fighter into an amateur. And this is the last of the big mistakes that he has left to fix. After that, he had two fights in one evening, but the level of the opponents was so shameful that all we saw was that KSI became lighter on his feet, faster, and had a better shape. And we also saw the second guy got everyone around with his whining. However, it's worth noting that KSI began to use his hook in a new way. It became a real weapon as demonstrated in the fight with Temper. The first thing that stood out in this fight was KSI's speed. He used bouncing to make his attacks more unpredictable. This helped him set the pace of the fight immediately. KSI has transformed from someone who was like Muhammad Ali without the skills to someone who has learned at least some of Muhammad Ali's techniques. KSI has completely changed his approach to the jab. Now there is more variety and deception. He understands the importance of distance and anthropometry. He has stopped making senseless brawls, waving his arms less and less. He now imposes his own pace on his opponents. Everything has become much better. KSI had a huge potential, and it's great to see him correct his mistake. The recent knockout, performed in the style of Muhammad Ali, was the peak of KSI's career. In this knockout, KSI used deception on the jab, followed by a straight punch instead of an overhand swing. Furthermore, KSI didn't put force into a right blow as he usually does, but instead made a step with his punch and knocked out with a left hook. This combination of moves changes KSI's approach and makes him a much smarter and more diverse fighter. In conclusion, KSI has gone from having a poor fighting style and not understanding what to do to becoming a skilled and elite boxer. KSI's determination and hard work have helped him achieve this and should not be underestimated or disrespected.